Hello, I'm Vikram, and I'll be talking about private mean estimation of heavy tail distributions. In our work, we give sample and computationally efficient private algorithms for mean estimation of heavy tail distributions in high dimensions. Here, by private, I mean differentially private, and by heavy tail, I mean distributions with bounded KF moments. I'm going to start by introducing the notion of private mean estimation first. Now, mean estimation is a fundamental problem in statistics, which has been studied extensively both with and without privacy. Uh, but in the privacy context, uh, we have sample access to an unknown distribution P with mean mu, and our goal is to privately output an estimate mu hat of mu. In other words, our algorithm must satisfy two properties. First, accuracy, which means that if given samples from the right family of distributions or from the distribution from the right family, then with high probability, we should output an estimate mu hat which is at most alpha far from mu in Euclidean distance. The second goal is privacy, which says that the algorithm should not reveal much about any single sample. And this should hold for all samples, always, regardless of the distribution they're coming from. A little more formally, we want our algorithm to be differentially private, which means that for any pair of data sets which differ on at most one sample, the output distributions of our algorithm on the two data sets, mx and mx prime, should be closed in some particular metric. Now, this sort of privacy is usually quantified by some parameter and is typically achieved by adding some random noise that is large enough to mask the effects of any single sample in the worst case, or what we call the sensitivity of the function we are computing. Now, going back to the definition of privacy again, I mentioned that mx and mx prime should be closed and there are multiple ways of defining that closeness. But the one that I'm going to be using in this talk is the well-known epsilon delta differential privacy. Uh, you don't really have to remember this definition for the purpose of this talk. All you need to know that mx and mx prime are going to be closed in the epsilon delta dp metric. Great. So now I'll delve a bit into a few things I mentioned on the previous slide, starting with sensitivity. Now, sensitivity of a function f is the maximum change in its value by switching one point to another. Now, I'll talk about a simple mechanism which ensures privacy. It's like a privacy primitive. It's called the Gaussian mechanism. What it does is that it computes the value of the function at the data set and adds some random noise sample from a Gaussian, which is calibrated to the sensitivity of the function and then output the sum. The key thing here is that it is epsilon delta differentially private. And we're going to be using this for the purpose of high dimensional mean estimation in this presentation. Also, there's something called Laplace mechanism, which uh, is epsilon zero differentially private. And it uses, as the name suggests, Laplace noise instead of Gaussian noise that is calibrated to a sensitivity. And that's something we're going to be using for the purpose of one-dimensional estimation for some technical reasons. Great, so I'll describe some moment assumptions here and how our results could be related to them. Uh, as a reminder, heavy tail distributions are the ones whose KF moments are bounded, in this case by one. And the goal of the estimator is to accurately find an estimate mu hat, which is at most alpha far from the true mean in L2 distance. Now, without privacy, this can be done using D over alpha squared sample, no matter what moment is bounded here. Like, it doesn't matter if the second moment is bounded and the data is super heavy tail, or if all the moments are bounded, like the Gaussian. In privacy, however, things change. We get a hierarchy of sample complexities based on the value of K which means that for the second moment, we get D over alpha squared epsilon samples, but for sub-Gaussians, we need D over alpha epsilon samples to be accurate, which was shown by Kamada Tal last year. So the question is, what if we don't have such extreme distributions like sub-Gaussians? Is there anything we can do? Well, the answer is yes, which is what we do. Um, I'm gonna start with the first result, which is about mean estimation in one dimension. 
we are given capital access to an unknown distribution with mean mu, and the goal is to privately estimate mu. So we give an epsilon zero DP algorithm, which does that using one over alpha squared plus one over epsilon times alpha to the k over k minus one samples. But that's not all. For the purpose of privacy, we need to have some bound on the range of the data or the distribution so that we can calibrate the sensitivity. And that parameter here is R, which bounds the magnitude of the mean. Now, about the sample complexity. We get a hierarchy of sample complexities based on K again. And this hierarchy is optimal, but I'm not gonna be discussing the optimality in this presentation. Also, we can allow R to be very large because the dependence on that is logarithmic, and this will not hurt the sample complexity at all. Okay, so for the rest of this presentation, I'm gonna be assuming that R equals one because via prior techniques, we can essentially narrow down the range in some sense. Great, so let's see how the magic happens. Uh, well, I'm gonna start with a trivial warm-up algorithm first. We have samples x1 through xn, and we first truncate them within the interval minus o uh, of n to the one over k to plus o of n to the one over k to get samples y1 through yn respectively. Now using Chebyshev's inequality and the union bound, all the samples with high probability must lie within this interval. Now the sensitivity of this empirical mean of these truncated points is the length of the interval divided by n. So we output the noisy empirical mean, that is compute the empirical mean of these truncated points and add some Laplace noise that is calibrated to the sensitivity. Now this is, as I mentioned before, epsilon zero differentially private. But the important thing here is that the sample complexity is one over epsilon alpha, the whole thing to the k over k minus one, which is suboptimal. Uh, and that's because the length of the interval is large and the bias is very low, but because of this length, we add too much noise. Um, so we somehow want to reduce the size of this interval. So let's see how. Our private algorithm, which is optimal, is the same, except that the truncation is more aggressive. Define R to be O of epsilon n, the whole thing to the one over k, now we truncate to within minus r and plus r to get the truncated points y1 through yn. And now the sensitivity is smaller because the length of the interval is smaller and we again output the noisy empirical mean. The sample complexity here is one over epsilon times alpha to the k over k minus one, which is optimal. And that is because even though the bias is slightly higher, the noise we add is much lower. We actually show that the bias and the noise are pretty much balanced now. Um, let me tell you what I mean by that. In the first picture, in this extreme, the length of the interval is huge and it essentially covers almost all of the distribution. So there's almost no bias, it's negligible. But in the second picture, this is also an extreme where the length of the interval is too short, too small, and we end up losing most of the distribution which moves the mean of this truncated distribution too far away from the actual mean, which means that the bias gets blown up. So we wanna find some middle ground. That is, we wanna truncate aggressively enough that the noise we add for privacy is lower, but it should not be that aggressive that the bias completely blows up. Great, so with that, I'm gonna move on to the proof of the main theorem. First, I'm gonna formally define what truncation actually means here, uh, even though we've used that implicitly in the previous slides many times before. Let X be a random variable from the distribution and Y be the corresponding truncated random variable. So Y equals X when X lies within minus R and plus R. Otherwise, it equals the boundary point, which is nearest to X. So the first result is that the bias of this truncated random variable is low, that is, if r is epsilon n, the whole thing to the one over k, and mu lies between minus r over two and r over two, then expected value of y is gonna be at most alpha far from the mean mu. The second result is about 
the sampling error and it's pretty standard and it just says that if you have enough samples then the sampling error is going to be low that is if you have at least one over alpha squared samples then the empirical mean is going to be very close to the actual mean with high probability now with these two results in hand all we need now is the noise due to privacy to be low which is exactly what happens because with high probability the noise due to privacy is at most r over epsilon n and for that to be less than alpha, it is enough to have the number of samples n more than one over epsilon times alpha to the k over k minus one. So the result follows from triangle inequality. So that proves the theorem and that's it for the one dimensional case. I'm gonna move on to estimation in high dimensions, which is our, which is our second result. Given sample access to an unknown distribution with mean mu in high dimensions, we have to privately estimate mu. And without privacy, we can do that using D over alpha squared samples, as I mentioned before. But for the purpose of privacy, we give an epsilon delta DP algorithm, which does that using D over epsilon times alpha to the K over K minus one additional samples. There's also a, an additive term, which is very small, and we don't really care about that. But the key features of the sample complexity are as follows. Uh, the non-private sample complexity is independent of K, well, we get a hierarchy of sample complexity based on the values of k. And also, we don't really need to bound the value of mu or the magnitude of mu at all. It, it can be totally unbounded, but we'll still get the same result. So this is how we do it. The algorithm is pretty similar to that of the 1D algorithm, truncate and learn. Uh, so the first step is to accurately estimate all coordinates of the mean with accuracy 1 using the 1D algorithm. And this gives us an estimate P. And now we have a ball of radius O root D around P that contains mu. Now we tr truncate within radius of epsilon N, the whole thing to the one over K times D to the K minus two over two K around P to get the truncated point. And then we use the Gaussian mechanism to output the noisy empirical mean of the truncated point. Um, as I said before, this is epsilon delta differentially private. Uh, but the key thing here is that sample complexity is low. It's linear in D. And we show that the noise bias and the sampling error are all of the same magnitude. And that is O of alpha. And it is also pretty similar to, the proof is also pre pretty similar to that of the 1D proof. So I'm not going to talk about that. And yeah, I'm going to stop right here. This is the end. So to conclude, we give tight bounds for mean estimation of heavy tail distributions in one dimension. We also give computationally efficient algorithms for mean estimation of heavy tail distribution in high dimensions under epsilon delta dp. And finally, we give mean estimation of heavy tail distribution uh, in high dimensions under epsilon zero dp. That's something I did not talk about in this presentation, but please feel free to check out the manuscript for the same. That's it. Thank you.